The market's taking a tumble on today's horrible news. The Dow down some 800 points already this morning. It's been kind of fluctuating between 7 and 8 plus. Fox Business host Charles Payne is in focus. Charles, you sat down moments ago before we started. We're in trouble. We are in a lot of trouble. Uh, and Larry, Larry laid it out pretty good because, you know, the experts, everyone kind of thought maybe we'd have peak inflation in December. They say, well, January, February, March, April, May. Uh, and it's just persistent. It just, it just won't go away. They created a monster. They created a beast. And it's hard to... Who, to, Who created a beast? It's a one-two punch. I mean, listen, the Federal Reserve pumped a lot of money into our economy. But that money doesn't really get into regular folks' hands, you know, like it, it helps mostly corporations. That last bit of cash uh, that the Biden administration put in, the $1.9 trillion, paying people twice as much money to stay at home than to go to work, uh, the STEMI checks, all of that created an environment where we just went out and we spent the hell out of it and we created these problems. Now, when you, the, on the wage side, what happened is, of course, if people can make more money staying at home than going, not going to work, then you have a problem for businesses. And what businesses have tried to do is raise wages. That's how we've got the wage price spiral. By the way, this year, according to ADP, small businesses, they lost employees every single month. They've lost employees over a quarter of a million. They can't keep up. If Amazon's paying 25 bucks, you know, the store, the shop next door can't keep up. So it's all, it's all over the place. Here's the interesting thing about the market and what the market's telling us. Immediately, we went down 500 points on the Dow when this news came out. Then I we mean, were, within seconds. Yeah, within seconds. And then we were kind of moving this way. Then we got the, uh, another gut punch. Okay, so this is what I want to get to, because this is about Americans right. and what we're feeling. Right. The Michigan sentiment, the consumer sentiment number, came in at an all-time low. All-time for this president. All-time low for 85 years. All-time low. All-time low. What does that mean? We've never felt like this crappy before. Oh, my goodness. And just to put it in a nutshell, we've never that felt did. this crappy before. And so we went down the extra 300 so points. Because the markets understand that when people feel that bad and that dismal and that, that despair in their soul, it affects everything they do. Sure, sure. It, everything it, we do. So, yeah. look, if I don't want to spend five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 gallons, I'm not even saying it making it up $10 a gallon for some in California right, now, right. right? If I don't want to do that, if I just want to sit home and I don't want to participate in the workforce and I want to collect some help checks or whatever is out there now, I can sit down and that, that hurts us even more. Well, that is what got us in this situation, right? That's how well, we ended up with this wage crisis. This isn't people to get up. Uh, ironically, people now may have to get two jobs, though, to, to get the ba to, to really check this out. This is a survey that came out. I just want you to listen to some of this. 87% of people have made an effort to find cheaper prices on products they buy. 77% have cut back on spending on entertainment or eating out. 74% have put off purchases otherwise planned. 59% of people minimize the use of electricity. How do you do that? You keep some lights off. I mean, it's yeah, just... Yeah, but in California, they're having a heat wave. <laughs> Have you seen the weather out there? The I, whole map is just, red. Just think about that. I mean, like, hey, turn off these lights. I Listen, when I grew up, my mom used to have to say that, but, you know, we were perpetually yeah, we're in this situation, right. right? I know. You know, this is not something we've been accustomed to as Americans for a very long time. Uh, and, and there are other surveys that are saying that people are actually... 9% of families are skipping a meal, the entire family. Around 40% of families are saying, you know what, on any given night, a parent will choose a skip or evening will choose to skip a meal so that all the children can eat. This is, a, this is where we barrel through. And this is, this is scary stuff. This is really scary stuff. So I'm taking notes as you're saying that. And I'm remembering here recently the Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen. I'm remembering here recently and the ineloquent words that she made on the economy and, and inflation. Oh, I'm so sorry I got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, stop talking. And then I remember the Michigan Senator Stabenow. That was just this week. Yeah. How she drives a Tony electric car now and can drive past the high prices. You just told me that 59% of people are making electricity decisions. Has anybody told her that that car runs on electricity? I mean, shout yeah, it at her. Yeah and, yeah, and you know, and that comes from natural gas, which by the way is up more than crude oil. Oh, and those natural gas, natural gas goes into wow. the making of fertilizer. We talked about all them food prices. So when she's patting herself at, on the back for driving an electric vehicle, she shouldn't feel too good because a lot of constituents aren't eating. 
All right, you always have some good news for us. I want to get to that. Here's President Biden's top economic advisor, Brian Deese, when he was asked about inflation just today on a competing network, and he stuck to the talking points. Today's number uh, underscores the challenge we have with energy prices that you were just discussing, but it also underscores why it's so important that the president is doing exactly what he's doing, making fighting inflation his top priority. The problem is that the price of gas at the pump is now up about $1.70 since Putin began amassing troops at the border. That is the impact of war. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not fun. Nobody likes it. But we have to stand against that uh, aggression. You know what I really don't like other than a hollow apology, which means nothing to right. Yellen and right. these others? Because right. they're not going to change their behavior, right. so it's just manipulation. I hate it when they lie to us. Like, do they think we're really stupid enough to believe that a war that started a bit more than 100 days ago is the reason why we've been in this sticky wicket for more than a year since yeah. we walked into office? It's, it's embarrassing. It's insulting and embarrassing, and it hurts so much more when the average person is hurting. Real quick to that point. Real wages, when you adjust for inflation, okay. have been down... Th minus 3.7, minus 2.8, minus 1.6, minus 1.2, minus 1.1, minus 8, per 8 tenths of a tenth, minus 1.1, minus 1.7, minus 2.4, minus 1.9. They, they keep going down. These are, no, I'm talking real wages. There, there's a nominal wage which you get in your paycheck, and there's just how far it goes in the economy. Real wages have been down, and the reason I'm pointing all these out, I started with the month after that $1.9 trillion went to, was signed off. Real wages have gone down every single month since then. We found out today in May they were down 8, 3%. This is why people are suffering. You actually have a bigger paycheck. When you walk in the store, you come out with fewer bags than you did just a year ago. And we had that up on the screen because you can see the disproportion between what we're taking in right. and how it really spends. Right. And, inflation and is crushing inflation. it. Inflation is crushing it. It's like the, an engine <clears throat> driving over us. The problem is you can't reel it in. You Why? can't reel it in. It, it, it feeds on itself. Like right now, if you think prices are going to be higher, let's just say two months from now, and there's something you wanted to get one of your kids uh, 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 for graduation, you had to get them a suit or something. You're going to get it now. You're going to do you it think, now. Right. And so we're all rushing out there. We're all trying and to get ahead of that. Put more demand. It's a which spiral. Makes the Prices it's a, go it's up, a spiral, and, and unfortunately, we just got to wait it out. The Fed right. is going to try to do their part. We'll see. I got to let you go. President Biden, what's his role? I think if he would just communicate better with us, I think honesty is the, is the most important thing right now. Because you think there's nothing he can do at this point? Expectations are what drives everything. And if he can mm. help us realistically with expectations, and we can feel better that they're going to do the right thing instead of making excuses about, uh, about Putin, and that would be good. And then the Federal Reserve's got to be aggressive. Well, the president said he wasn't going to interfere with the Federal Reserve. And that, then he had the chair over to the White House for lunch. Yeah, I'm so I, confused. He's not going to interfere with them, but he still wants to spend money. He wants to throw more kerosene on this runaway fire that he created. It's just nuts. Charles Payne in focus to cover this <laughs> with us. Thanks. Always good you to got see it. you. And the best news, it is the weekend for most yes. folks. I worked weekends with you for many years. but. Any day's a good day. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.